Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your daily dose of astrology with a little bit of tarot, yeah? Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So, uh, uh, constant reminder, we are looking at astrology for the day, okay? So this is for Monday of June 14th, um, but also uh, we are looking at the astrology from a sidereal point of view, yeah? Sidereal astrology, not mainstream or, or um, well, to be honest, not really even Vedic, um, but because it's the, it, this is sidereal astrology using the visible sky, okay? And in the form of, in this form of sidereal astrology, we not only use the visible sky, or in other words, where the actual planets are in our, <clears throat> I'm sorry, not the planets, but the constellations are in our sky, um, but also the actual size of the constellations. So there's going to be a slight difference even between uh, like a Vedic interpretation because technically all the, uh, all the constellations are not the same size, okay? So that's minor details, yeah? So uh, before we move forward, I do just want to mention that uh, the Daily Dose is a separate series to morning coffee and after it's looking like after about this week uh daily dose is going to be moving over to patreon so after this week if you would like to continue um having our sessions here where we talk about the astrology of the day um then go ahead and join me over on patreon you will uh, need to join either the uh, inner balance package or the full Monty. Yes. So check me out over there. Patreon.com slash divine conversations. Yeah. Um, so also keep in mind with the daily dose here, this is not, this is less timeless than let's say like a general tarot reading. Yeah. Um, even though we're talking about the transits of a certain day or the aspects of a certain day, um, it could, the energies could flow a little bit more, a little bit easier, okay? Um, it's not, there are no like hard lines when it comes to energy. So we're still going to be flowing through some of these energies as we move out of certain days. But this is definitely more of a um, timed situation than a general energy reading, yeah? All right, guys. So getting in today excuse me, getting into today. First of all, happy Monday. I hope you guys are doing well and I hope you had a good weekend. Speaking of which, let's start, let's start with talking about what happened over the weekend before we get into today's aspects. So the moon entered into its home sign of cancer. I wanna say late on Friday or maybe like around Friday evening or Friday afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. And so, uh, and the moon is currently in Cancer. The moon enters into Leo late this evening. Not late, excuse me, around seven o'clock or so, Eastern Standard Time, okay? So that's a good aspect. I mean, the fact that the moon was in Cancer all weekend technically is a good aspect because the moon is at home in Cancer. However, there is a little bit of, um, I mean, there's a, there's a positive and a negative side to everything, okay? Um, with the moon being in Cancer, even though the moon is, is at home in Cancer, this could have ha helped to make your emotions a little bit higher than normal, okay? Um, there could have been an energy of certain things just kind of coming out of the woodwork or certain emotions kind of coming out of nowhere, or you may have just felt a little bit more sensitive than normal. Um, one thing that I did notice over the weekend was that I actually felt much more stable, much more grounded, and much more balanced and happy when I was at home. And Cancer is the uh, the ruling sign of the fourth house. The fourth house is, you know, your home and your family life. So with the moon having been in Cancer, um, of course, this is after the fact, but the moon having, but but if you were to just look back on your weekend and ex and think about how you felt and think about what you experienced, you may find you may find or you may have found that being at home was easier for you or was more was much more comforting for you than 
normal, okay, maybe than usual, which technically can be a good thing, depending, obviously, depending on what your physical home life is, but always keep in mind that home is where the heart is. I mean, I know that's cliche, but at the same time, like, wherever your heart felt the most comfortable, that was probably an easier place for you to be, okay? So, um, now, the other aspect of, you know, the moon being in Cancer and everything is um, Mars is also in Cancer right now. And actually, v has Venus entered into Cancer yet? I'm, I'm not sure about that yet. I do know that by the time we hit the next full moon, which is going to be on the 24th of June, uh, can uh, Venus will be in Cancer. And we'll get into that later. All my Patreoners, you guys can expect um, a full moon report sometime this week, most likely by Wednesday. It's kind of my plan for the week. But you know what they say, make a good way to make God laugh is to make a plan, right? Okay, anyway. Um, but we can talk about that aspect later. But the thing about this weekend, and, and this is most likely carrying into today for you guys, okay? But um, the moon is in Cancer, Mars is in Cancer, and there was a conjunction between Mars and the moon, okay, all weekend. So this kind of supported the possibility of emotions that may have been hidden deep within yourself have coming up into the surface kind of seemingly out of nowhere. However, it wasn't out of nowhere because on a soul level, on a, well, let, let's say, let's look at this from the point of view of your higher self, who is guiding you in your con in this body, in your conscious mind, guiding you through your life and your soul evolution. And as I was reading through this, as I was reading through the chart and just kind of getting a feel for the energies, it felt like on a higher self level, there was a supporting energy of the moon being in Cancer. It, it, it was, it was, there was a lot of loving and nurturing energy that was readily available. So that kind of opened a doorway or opened a window for your soul or for your higher self to start digging things out from beneath the surface that you hadn't necessarily dealt with, that you probably needed to for a long time. It just technically, the circumstances may have not been right for it, okay? So if, if there was any sort of strong emotions that came through, any, maybe even emotional outbursts or whatever, don't beat yourself up about it. It was necessary for you to go through in order for you to regain the healing that was surrounding whatever that situation was for you that seemingly came out of nowhere, okay? Now, today, Today could be, so that, those were the energies of the weekend, right? Um, and like I said, by tonight, by Monday night, by the night of uh, the evening of the 14th of June, the moon will be moving into Leo, okay? The moon is fairly happy in Leo. It's not a bad placement. Um, but today, specifically, uh, could be all about what's coming up emotionally for you and what exactly it is you can do about it, okay? There's an opposition with Saturn, which we're gonna get into a little bit later, but there is an opposition with Saturn that almost gives you an answer to a bunch of the questions that you may have had about this or what's going on with your life, okay? Saturn almost takes this question and provides you with a practical solution to everything, If, but that's if you're willing to be honest with yourself and do the work that um, is required, or at least to, to face whatever is coming up, okay? Now, if you're really willing to work with these energies, you can take it one step further because we do have a square between the moon and Uranus. Now, this can be a difficult aspect, okay? And there are actually, to be, to, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, today could be actually a really tough day for a lot of us because, um, because of all the squares that are happening today. But the first one, let's start with the one that's most likely going to I kind of feel like it's most likely going to help you the most, and that's a square between Uranus and the moon. Now, Uranus is a, a planet of sudden change, upheavals. Lots of things can happen out of nowhere with Uranus. That seems to be kind of the energies of like this whole process, right? Like shit's just coming out of nowhere, and you're like, what the hell? What do I do with this, right? Okay. But with the square between the moon and Uranus today, 
it can provide you with an opportunity to reach sudden changes or or uh sudden suddenly your mind starts to change or you start to see something differently or you start to understand something better this it, even and yes i know it's a square squares are difficult aspects okay the square is when things are like literally facing off right now they're squaring up like they about to fight right but i just feel like combined with what else we're going through today even though this is a square, Uranus can help you to provide with that, oh, jinx, P provide you with that energy to say, okay, all of a sudden your mind or your thought process or your understanding of what's going on for you can suddenly change, okay? Now, before, before I go any further, let me pause for a second and let jinx out. All right. I give it five minutes and then we're probably going to hear her outside crying at the door saying, hey, let me back in. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> let's move forward here. Yeah, now we're getting into the topic or the area in which we really could be. This is this is the source of most of our trouble today. Okay, we have a square, another square between oh in total today there were three squares that i saw that could i just heard could be potentially dangerous at least for your emotional state and your mental state okay you have a square now between the sun and neptune and then mercury and neptune on top of that the sun and mercury are conjunct today conjunctions are where the energies of these two planets or the planets in question fuse together, okay? So, I mean, technically this is a, a neutral thing. It could, it could lean towards more of a positive aspect, but with the Sun and Mercury already being conjunct, so your sense of self, the energies of your soul, uh, your understanding about yourself, and then your conscious mind, your thought process, uh, your form of communication and all that, those are fusing together today. And those lines are already blurred, okay? So it could kind of be an energy just on its own. It could, it could be potentially hazardous in terms of, um, I want to say your ego. I mean, I know Mercury doesn't rule the ego. That's more of a Martian energy, a Mars energy. But... Your ego is very directly connected to your conscious mind. So as I'm thinking through this, as I'm feeling through this, as I'm building my interpretation here, the sense of the ego just kept coming through. So it's like your soul, your, 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 the, the identity that you know of in terms of yourself, the sun, and then your conscious mind, Mercury, and kind of, it, I just keep hearing it, so I'm going to say it and your ego are already kind of like blurring together, which can be kind of dangerous because, or potentially hazardous, hazardous, because your ego doesn't have the full picture, okay? Your ego only sees or only perceives of what is, what your conscious mind sees. Your ego doesn't, doesn't have, a, doesn't have the, the view of your subconscious mind, right? And, but your soul does, you know, your soul, even your higher aspects of yourself, your soul sees so much more of it than your ego does. So with this conjunction, things, the lines are already blurred, okay? On top of that, we have a square with Neptune and the sun, and then the ne Neptune is also squaring Mercury. Neptune is the planet of illusions. Um... Yes, of psychic ability, of the occult, of, of, of sometimes of kind of like, I want to say luck, eh, kind of, but also illusions. Like the dark side of, of, of Neptune is drug addiction and uh, criminal tendencies and, and kind of bad luck and just things like that, okay? So, so with this square between Neptune and the sun and also Neptune and Mercury, now all of the illusions potentially are like right up in your face and you have the opportunity or the, the potential to get lost in the illusions to get lost in your fears 
um, to to lose your sense of self or your sense of self can really be skewed and twisted even more than it already is at this moment okay so this that right there just the aspects between Neptune and then the Sun and Mercury that today seems to be the most difficult thing to deal with so when that happens or if that happens if that if you're experiencing that in a negative way really do your best to try and stay as grounded as you possibly can if you need to take some time you need to take like five minutes and step back and like work on some affirmations or something i highly recommend that you allow yourself the time to do that it's really going to help you in the end now keep in mind that this square between the sun and neptune is going to last until the 22nd of june looking like really early in the morning, like around 5 a.m. or so, 4.45, 5 a.m. or so, Eastern Standard Time, all right? And that's two days before this full moon, which, again, we're going to get into that in a completely different session, but the full moon feels like it's going to be a really awesome and really powerful time for us, okay? this I'm seeing this full moon that's coming as a culmination of everything that started or that was kicked off in the last full moon, okay, but we'll we'll talk about that in another session. Anyway, last thing that I want to say about today's energies, and then I'm going to do a little bit of a card pull on this, but um, and this might seem difficult, but we have Saturn opposing the moon, okay, which again is another di potentially difficult aspect uh, of oppositions. Technically, an opposition is neutral, however. It also tends to lean towards the side of um, uh, difficult just because of what an opposition is. So an opposition is when two planets are directly opposing each other, so at about 180 degrees from each other. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, with this, even though that can be kind of different, uh, uh, be kind of uh, difficult, you also have the opportunity to see, to perceive of these two energies or what they're representing, representing for you very clearly in an individual way. So you see one side of it very clearly and then you see the other side of it very clearly. And the challenge with an opposition is to work to fuse those energies together, okay? And, and what helps you fuse those energies together is the fact that you're seeing them uh, start, you're seeing the stark difference between them. You're, you see the, 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 the two sides very clearly. It's like seeing two sides of a coin, okay? Now, even though this tends to be neutral but can also lean towards difficulty, the fact that it involves Saturn kind of adds a little extra level of difficulty to it just because Saturn tends to be, the energies of Saturn tend to be very difficult energies to work with, okay? very confining, very just restricting, and can also be very destructive, all right? Now, with the squares, with Neptune today, I feel like this may turn out to be pretty helpful, this, uh, this opposition between Saturn and the moon. The energies of Saturn may help you recognize what is real and what is not. So even though there's strong potential to get lost in the illusions, to really get lost in the sauce of your emotions, especially since Mars is, um, uh, well, no, especially since the moon is still in Cancer for most of the day. It doesn't move until Leo until the end of the day. Um, you may, you have the potential to really get lost in the sauce today, all right? So be careful. But the opposition between the moon and Saturn, again, helps you to put into perspective, or at least gives you a boost in terms of putting into perspective what is real and what is not, what is reality and what is not, what is illusion, what is fear, and what is not, okay? This may actually help you stay grounded through all of the illusions that may be popping up for you, yeah? But also this may provide a bit of motivation to stay the course, okay? Uh, the more that you're able to understand what's real and what isn't, the more you're able to potentially clear that out of your way and keep yourself focused in terms of the, the consistent direction that you are looking to move in, all right? Saturn in this opposition very clearly reminds us that the way, the only way to get through this or the only way to do this is to keep moving through it. The only way through it is to keep going, all right? Do not stop and definitely do not turn back.
no matter what this fear and illusion may bring up for you, do not by any means turn back. Keep striving, keep moving forward, okay? All right, I do wanna get into a little bit of a card pull here with this. And I'm gonna start with the Moonology deck. And then, um, <laughs> and then I was guided, five shuffles here. I was guided to uh, pull the Wonderland Tarot deck. Because of all the illusions that are we may be facing today, this is three. Because of all the illusions, it, I, I saw that deck and I was like, oh my god, that would be so perfect. So we're going to also work with the the uh, Wonderland Tarot. Yeah, this is four. And this is five. Okie dokie. So, what messages do we have in terms of today's transits, today's aspects? Not transits, today's aspects. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. And it's so crazy that this came out because as I was talking about what Saturn is doing today, um, you remember at the very end, I was saying Saturn is helping you potentially see what is illusion and what's not. It can also provide you with a sense of <clears throat> drive and direction to keep moving. Um, I, al I also kind of felt that, you know, this is kind of a test, right? especially with all the illusions that come up. Saturn Saturn rewards consistency, okay? Saturn rewards hard work, regardless as to what is going on around you. If you stay the course, if you keep to the plan, you are most likely going to be rewarded for your efforts. And the card that has come out here is the first quarter moon. Your commitment is being tested. Do not give up. Do not give up. All right, let's get a little bit more here. I want to get two more cards, please, Spirit. Two more cards for today's uh, aspects, today's astrological energies. Yep. One more, please. Thank you. Okay. Overall energy, third quarter moon, adjustments are required. So, quite frankly, in terms of that, excellent. In terms of the adjustments that are required, the square between Neptune, okay, so the conjunction with uh, the Sun and Mercury, plus the square between Neptune and the Sun, and then Neptune and Mercury, yes, all kinds of illusion, right? But you could, this, the, Neptune could actually be helping you to, by pulling up all, digging up all these illusions so that you can work through them, so that you can clear them away, for, clear them out of your path, right? You have its time to release negativity. So allow any illusions that you have. Ah, I just heard in the deep, like in the deep perceptions of your soul, anything that's illusionary around that. So any sort of childhood traumas, um, negative belief systems, negative beliefs about yourself, allow that to come up. Allow yourself to perceive of that clearly and then hold on to Saturn as he continues to pull you through this illusion and fear so that you can get a deeper understanding of it, okay? And allow yourself to release that negativity. And then finally, a beautiful card, new moon in Taurus, prosperity lies ahead. But this is why you absolutely cannot give up, guys, okay? Don't give up here. Let this process take the time that it needs to, yeah? All right, I'm gonna give this five shuffles and then we're gonna get a little bit of clarification on these cards here. This is two. This is three. Four. And five. All right. So, we're going to start here. First quarter moon. Your commitment your commitment is being tested, all right? Remember, we're dealing with Saturn here. Saturn is in retrograde, but Saturn rewards consistency, okay? Please uh, clarify, please, Spirit. Your commitment is being tested. Just one more card, please. Interesting. 
Okay. Uh, there may be some distractions today. Okay. Um, I feel like most of these came out in reverse. I want to say most of these came out in reverse, but you have three cards here. Uh, and it's all about the emotions. All about the emotions. So, okay. Um, you have the Three of Cups. You have the Knight of Cups. And then you have the Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups did... It did it was the only card that survived this reversal. Um, excuse me. But to be honest here, what I really want to say is I do feel like uh, you today you're feeling out of alignment, all right? And which makes perfect sense because at the bottom of the deck, you do have the Three of Swords, okay? Underneath that is the Six of Swords in reverse. I feel like this is... Um, First of all, I do feel like there could be distractions with this Three of Cups energy. There could be some energies of individuals trying to take you off your path. Some of you may be tempted to slip into some negative habits, indulgences, or coping mechanisms because of this Ten of Cups in reverse, okay? And also this Three of Cups. I am, I am kind of getting that from the Three of Cups here. Um, but instead of... Instead of slipping into negative aspects or like trying to connect with those people that, you know, that vibe with you on this lower level and only help to make you feel worse in the end in terms of you trying to, to, reach, to, to, to cope. Instead, if you can reach out to individuals that would help to raise your vibration here, that would be way more beneficial for you. Okay. There's also, there's also something about a community. Uh, with this Knight of Cups here and the Three of Cups, I feel like um, Source, what I'm hearing is Source is guide, guiding you to a, a, a new community. Something that actually may be way more, may, way more of a representation of the Ten of Cups, okay, which is in reverse here. This is your sense of ultimate emotional fulfillment. Um, it's also a, 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 a card of community and family, okay? But in terms of your commitment is being tested, even though, yes, you do feel out of sorts here, you don't feel like you have the, the ultimate wish fulfillment that you want, and you're facing heartbreak, uh, ex pretty extreme heartbreak at this time, keep going. I'm hearing your community is coming to you. The guidance is correct. Um, allow yourself to be free from the drama and the turmoil and the pain. So for some of you, if you're facing at this moment, if you're facing moving forward or moving away from a certain community, a certain friend group or something like that, maybe even a certain romantic relationship, um, honor that. Trust the process. Follow your heart, not what the hive mind might be telling you. Okay? All right. And that takes us straight to it's time to release negativity, which is a perfect, which is perfect here. So what is this? What um, what is uh the the negativity that we're releasing? Please clarify, spirit. Time to release negativity. Yep, that's enough. Okay. Page of Cups. Apologies. I'm sorry. That was the first thing that I heard. I'm sorry. Uh, when I saw this, um, but the Page of Cups could also be a level of dreaming up a new reality. This is very interesting. You have two Aces here. You have the Ace of Cups, and you have the Ace of Pentacles. You also have that with the Empress, but then the Eight of Swords. So in terms of the negativity, this is what you're releasing here. And remember, guys, um, we have a lot of aspects today that are going to bring up a lot of illusions, okay? And yes, they are illusions, um, and they are the things, some of the things, at least at this moment in your journey, that you are going to really benefit from cutting out of your life. So I do feel like some of these illusions absolutely have to do with things that hold you back. Belief systems, negative self-talk, negative habits. Uh, negative thought processes, anything that you, you, any sort of conditioning that you've developed over your life up until this point that has kept you trapped, this is what we're releasing. And we release this through unconditional love, Ace of Cups and the Empress. We release this by allowing ourselves to dream up a new reality, but we also release this by forgiving not only other people, 
And again, remember that that forgiveness in terms of other people is solely for you. It's not for them, okay? But you either do this by forgiving other people and or forgiving yourself, okay? Now, I want to sit here and say that this could bring in new love for some of us, and that's entirely possible. But if that's the case, then that's going to start with you loving yourself, okay? The motherly energy of the Empress plus the Ace of Cups. Loving yourself, filling your cup, loving yourself enough to face whatever illusions are coming up for you and then grabbing on to the to to the to the reins of Saturn and allowing him to pull you through this okay to release and clear up all of these illusions you may have about yourself or all of the illusions that you have about the path moving forward that is going to provide you with a brand new opportunity a seed that you can now plant into the earth and, and draw on the loving, beautiful, nurturing, caregiving energies of the Empress to allow that seed to grow into a brand new, beautiful plant for yourself. Okay? That's the regular, that's how we're released. That's what we need to do, or that's the message in terms of releasing the ne negativity. Yeah? Finally, I want to clarify prosperity lies ahead. Okay? Prosperity lies ahead. What clarity can you bring us to that, please, Spirit? Uh -huh. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. You do have the five of swords, but right now the five of swords at the, as the overall energy here uh, in terms of prosperity lies ahead is symbolizing the negative and combative energies, or at least the potentiality for that in this energy right now. Okay. And the best thing for you to do in terms of a five of swords energy is to pick your battles wisely. In some cases, it's better just to drop your sword altogether and walk away. But that, but walking away from the struggle or the, the self-sabotage or the self-defeating energies, that's what's coming up with all these, or potentially coming up with all these illusions that you could be facing today, but that Saturn could help you move through in, term, in terms of clearing that out, releasing that negativity, and keeping yourself on the path on your current trajectory, on your current path, okay? Five of Swords. Underneath the Five of Swords is the Nine of Swords, okay? Which I'm going to say is somewhat of a good thing only because the Nine is the ending. From the Nine, you go to the Ten, the completion. And after the Nine of Swords, you do have Death to the Two of Wands to the Star. Interesting. Interesting. Also then to the King of Wands and the Nine of Cups. No, I'm sorry. This is what? That's the King of Swords. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. This, I'm, <laughs> this is the Wonderland deck. I forgot. But this is the King of Swords to the Nine of Cups and then the King of Wands. And I'm going too far, so I need to stop. Okay. Um, but the, the reason why I'm saying that is because of the other cards that have come out here. But what, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm moving too fast. I'm going too deep. What is this saying? My, the, the thing that I wanted to say here with the Nine of Swords is this feels almost like a Nine of Wands energy too. The Nine of Swords also represents, you know, um, you know, fears and self-fulfilling prophecies. But again, I feel like this is all the illusions that could be coming up today. All right. It's just an illusion. And the other thing that I was getting with the Nine of Swords is a similar energy to the Nine of Wands. Just keep going. Just push through this. Do not stop. Do not turn back. Do not run and hide in the corner or in the closet or something like that. Push through this because right after this, you have the transformation, death, which is going to provide you with an opportunity to move in a different direction or just to keep going in your current direction, two of wands, towards your wish fulfillment, two of the both wish fulfillment cards, nine of wands, I'm sorry, nine of cups and the star. But that comes because of your sense of clarity and then also taking action in your alignment. King of Swords, King of Wands. Now, that was all just under the deck. Look at what has come out here. Again, we're, we're clarifying prosperity lies ahead, right? First card out was the High Priestess to the Queen of Wands, all right? So we have the King and the Queen of Wands showing up here. And the Chariot. This is a beautiful, beautiful energy. Trust your intuition. Also, though, with the High Priestess, 
there is a bit of a chaotic process that's happening here, but that's only perceived on the conscious level. The deeper workings of your soul knows and understands this creative process or this chaotic process much better than your conscious mind and your ego. And remember, you have the conjunction between the sun and mercury today, okay? So your conscious mind and your sense of self or your the identity of your soul are kind of fusing together today. That could be helpful in terms of drawing on the powers of your soul or the understanding of your soul of this seemingly create uh, 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 chaotic yet creative process, okay? But it also could be potentially hazardous, so keep that in mind. But the High Priestess, this is representing your higher self. This is representing higher guidance. This, There is a purpose to all of this. There is a process underneath the surface that you cannot see on a conscious level. And you don't even try, don't even try to understand it on a conscious level. Instead, hold your alignment, Queen of Wands, and make sure that you stay balanced, the Chariot because you are moving forward, okay? This is all part of the process, you guys, all right? This is beautiful energy. That's a really great way to end all this. <sighs> okay, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Please keep in mind and remember that after this, it's looking like after this week, uh, the Daily Dose is going to be moving on to Patreon, but whatever. With that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next chat tomorrow morning. Or just tomorrow. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye! <laughs>